into the fall feast days. So many churches have said that they're not for them anymore. But I tell you, his church still observes them. His his feast days, his word is forever. It will all these feast days pointed to him, and he is still alive today. Hallelujah! And one feast day pointed to his assembly, his called out ones. Hallelujah! That atoning day, that a day of atonement, it is all together will be done until the very last one is atoned by the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. So we still look to these days, his appointed days, and we give out a shout right now for his days, feast days that are coming, and they're right upon us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, Yahshua, Messiah. Hallelujah. He is worthy of all of our praise. Are you looking to Him today? Are you still expecting His Word to come to pass? Because it will. It will come to pass. It will be done because He's completing all that is in His great creation in these last days. It's going to be done. Hallelujah. His glory is manifested more and more. And evil, wicked, ugly, demonic works are still raising their ugly heads. And... C coming against us, but praise His name. We are overcomers. He overcome, He said in John 16, 33, Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I've overcome these temptations that you're going to have. Hallelujah. And we're to overcome today. And it's through His blood. It's through the anointing of His Word. His Word washes. Hallelujah. There's a song, hallelujah, that is sung, uh, it's sung in Cherokee and in English. It's... Uh, Come and pray. Go pray on the mountain. Pray by the ocean. Wash your spirit clean. Ephesians 5.26 says to wash your spirit clean with the washing of His Word. His Spirit is alive forevermore. You may be uh, looking at the wrong things today and in fear, but look to Him and get, uh, get what He said to you to have is love and power and a sound mind. You don't have to fear anything that's coming in, in this world today. Hallelujah. We look to Him and He is our power to overcome. Hallelujah. Today, Pastor Dr. Jerry Bowers, Bishop Bowers, is coming with the precious Holy Word about these feast days. So receive today. Change your perspective and get with the word of Yahweh. His word is true and it's going to be coming to pass. It will be done in the name of Yeshua for his glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come here to worship the King of glory and receive a word from him today. Amen. How many know that the, uh, the fall feast that we find in the Word of God are still waiting fulfillment. Amen. The spring feasts have been fulfilled or have a partial fulfillment, ongoing fulfillment, if you will. But the fall feasts prophetically are still waiting for Amen. fulfillment. Amen. And uh, this next week, Monday, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, begins the Feast of Trumpets, the ten days of the Feast of Trumpets. Amen. All of these things point to the return of Christ. Amen. We're going to look at some of these prophecies because they're pointing to some things that we need to hear from God that are very, very relevant for our day. Open your Bibles with me to Leviticus chapter 25. Yeah. Father, bless the reading and the explanation of your word. Let your spirit come with power Amen. in Christ Yeshua's name. Amen. Now it says, this is talking about of the sabbatical year for the land. Leviticus 25, beginning with verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Did you know there was a Sabbath rest given to the land? Amen. That the land's supposed to keep. Well, how do they do that? Well, just keep listening. Six years... You shall sow your field. Six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. A Sabbath to the Lord. 
and you shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows on its own accord to your, uh, your harvest you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your unattended vine, for it is a year of rest to the land. Now look, God took this so serious that when the children of Israel stopped observing this for 10 cycles, so a cycle would be every seven years, right? So that would be 70 years, 10 cycles. When they stopped doing that, God sent them into Babylon for how many years? The same amount, 70 years, 10 cycles. They did not keep the Shemitah for the land. So God says, well, okay, you don't want to honor my word and give a rest to the land? I'll take you out of the land and remove you and send you to Babylon. That's why they were in Babylon. And at the end of that 70 years, they knew that that time was coming. Daniel knew it. But Daniel didn't get to bring them back. Who brought them back? Nehemiah did. And they rebuilt the walls and rebuilt Jerusalem. But this was the reason that happened. So now we have the Jewish New Year coming up. And we're going to talk about the Shemitah here in a second. By the way, the Shemitah year, the term Shemitah refers to that seven years of rest in the land every seventh year. How many know that this coming year, which begins next week, the Jewish calendar, it is a Shemitah year. Somebody say with me, this is a Shemitah year. Yes. Okay, that has prophetic implications for us. Amen. Every time you take a feast and you take it up through the cross or up through Calvary, it has a spiritual application. We don't just do away with these things. God's still using them, but it becomes more of a spiritual application. So what's the prophetic application? Well, hang on to your horses because we're going to find out. So the, the Jewish New Year starts Monday, this coming Monday, September 6 and 7. It's called Rosh Hashanah, which means head of the year. It kicks off the Feast of Trumpets for 10 days. So if you count 10 days from the 6th, it brings you till the 16th of September. And what happens on the 16th? Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And so for 10 days, they were to... They were to blow the trumpet, blow the shofar, every one of those ten days. Amen. Why? Because God was declaring something in the land. Amen. It was a call to repentance. It was, a, it was a time of reset. How many know when your power goes out sometimes on your your computer uh, cord, you can hit the reset. Now we've got it in the bathrooms. If you use that blow dryer too much and you, you trip that thing, you got to go over there and punch the reset to get your power back. God has a reset to put the power back. Amen. <clears throat> it is the Feast of Trumpets. <clears throat> For 10 days, the people of God are to pray and reset themselves before God. And what they believed was this. Everything they did during those 10 days leading up to Yom Kippur would determine their fate and destiny for the next year. So they would say to each other, Vondel, have you been sealed for the new year, brother? Because everything you did during this 10 days would prepare you for your destiny. Amen. Now, ultimately, this points to the return of Christ. Because we know in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, at the sound of the trumpet, Paul says the sound of the great trumpet, this, immortal, this mortality must put on immortality. And this flesh must put on incorruption. At the sound of the trumpet, what trumpet's he talking about? He's talking about the, what was called the Godel trumpet, the great trumpet that was sounded as Yom Kippur, the final day on the 16th, as that was completed, they would sound that trumpet. And if it was a year of Jubilee, it meant everybody got to go free and return. Slaves were set free and everything was restored. How many know when Christ comes, 
everything will be restored and everybody will go free. These feasts all point to that reality. That's why prophetically they're waiting fulfillment. So during the 10 days, there's fasting and prayer, seeking God, not only for our own hearts, but for our nation. Hear me now, for the land. The word smita means to release or fall or collapse. The land was to be let go for one year. But it means collapse or fall. When they didn't repent or obey God, the economy and everything fell and they went into judgment. They did. Just like Babylon. Do you know, out of the last 40 years, every financial collapse that we've had in America has come on a to year. Oh, wait a minute. For crying out loud, are you telling me God is still using that ancient calendar? Yes! yes. I am telling you that. 1973, collapse. 1980, 87, 2000, 2001, and the great collapse here, 2007 to 2008, because the Jewish year intersects two years. Amen. These are all smeet to years, and every one there was a financial collapse. If there is not prayer and repentance for America, between now and Yom Kippur, the 16th of September, our destiny and fate will be sealed for the next year and there will be a financial collapse and I wouldn't be surprised to see it as we head into October. Well, how can you say such a thing? Aren't we doing great? No, we're not doing great. We're betraying God in our nation. Well, how can you say such a thing? One of the things that comes before God is the shedding of innocent blood and the murder of the unborn, abortion. I want you to take note of something. God pays attention to calendars. Now, every 50th year was a year of Jubilee. Yes. And, and if there was repentance, the year of Jubilee meant there would be restoration. But if there was not repentance, there was judgment. So Jubilee was a two-edged sword. It, re it pointed to restoration if they were seeking God and turning back. If they were not, the sword of judgment fell. We know that Roe versus Wade started in Texas in 1973. But that was not the first law passed in America for abortion. You know what the first law was? It was in 1970. It was passed in New York City. And it authorized abortions up through the 24th week. Four months. Yeah? And then later, Roe versus Wade was passed. And then finally the Supreme Court um, enacted it as law for the a federal law for the land. But it actually started in 1970. If you go backwards from this year, 2021... And you go 50 years, a jubilee of 50 years, it will bring you back to the first law just after the first law was passed in New York City. And what happens every 50 years? Either there's a turning back to God or judgment falls on the land. And because we are looking at a jubilee cycle of 50 years when it comes to abortion and the shedding of innocent blood, more than 60 million babies aborted. I'm telling you, America is judgment bound if there's not repentance. Amen. Now, here in our congregation, we have those that are going to sign up for a corporate fast to take one day of the 10 days of the Feast of Trumpets from Monday the 6th through the 16th to fast and pray for America. So corporately, somebody from our congregation will be fasting one of those days between now and the 16th, Monday and the 16th, for America. There's got to be a turning back to God. And if it can't start with His people, who can it start with? And those of you that are listening online, if you don't have a church to plug into or somebody to join in prayer and fasting, join us. Take one of those days starting Monday and join us in fasting and praying for America for forgiveness for the shedding of innocent blood and that God will turn back the laws of the land. Now, in Texas, just this last week, Texas passed a law saying 
once there's a heartbeat, that means that there is a human being. And therefore, after six weeks, there's a heartbeat. No more abortions after there's a heartbeat. Now, we believe at conception, that's a, that's a human being. Amen. But this is the beginning of turning back what they're doing. And so the Supreme Court refused to hear the case. And so that meant it's, the law is left to stand. And Florida immediately said, we're going to enact the same law. Come on, Lord, use Texas to lead the way to overturn Roe versus Wade. Amen. So a couple things I want to share with you. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, you all are familiar with that. The Lord, Christ said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, set at liberty those who are bruised, set the captives free, open blind eyes, and declare the favorable year of the Lord. In other words, He came to declare liberty. And the favorable year of the Lord actually means jubilee. So what Christ was saying, every year is a year of jubilee. And in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says they overcame the enemy through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. One of the things, friends, that we need to apply is the blood of Christ to, to cleanse the land. Because the land must be cleansed or it invites judgment. The blood of innocent is crying out to God. Amen. If you have your Bibles handy, go with me to Deuteronomy. And I think it's 21. Let me get over here and look. Yes. So in Deuteronomy chapter 21, it talks about how to remove blood guilt from the land. And we've got a lot of blood guilt in, on the land of America. Amen. In verse 1 it says, If anyone is found slain, lying in the field, in the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess, and it is known who killed him, then your elders and your judges shall go out and measure the distance to the slain man. The elders of the nearest city of the slain man will take a heifer, which is not worked by the yoke. The elders of that city shall bring it down the valley with flowing water, and they're going to make a sacrifice to the Lord. And so if you read on. In verse 6. And all the elders of that city nearest the slain man. Shall wash their hands over the heifer. Whose neck was broken. And then they shall answer and say. Now here's the actual prayer and declaration. To remove blood guilt from the land. Our hands have not shed this blood. Nor have our eyes seen it. Provide atonement O Lord. For your people Israel, whom you have redeemed. And do not lay innocent blood to the charge of your people Israel. And atonement shall be provided on behalf for the blood. I had an occasion to use this one time. I was in Fresno, California. And in Fresno, California, they were having the largest reenactment of the Civil War in the nation. And you know what's strange about that? California sent no federal troops to fight in the Civil War. Why are they having the largest reenactment of the shedding of blood? So I called a couple of Native American friends of mine and I said, I want to go down to that park and repent before they do this. And ask God to remove any, because you're defiling the land even by reenacting the shedding of blood. Amen. And you're coming into covenant agreement with it. Amen. And so they joined me and we did that. We, we got us a bottle of water. And we repented. We read this text. And we said, oh Lord. Our eyes have not seen the civil war. Nor were we there. But it's being embraced and reenacted here on this land, defiling it. Oh, Lord God, remove from us the defilement on this land. And we poured water. All right. You know what happened? It started raining inside the park and it didn't rain outside the park. Because God was cleansing the land. See, God's given us tools for dealing 
with the shedding of blood, innocent blood, blood guilt. He's given us the ability to repent on behalf of the nation, on behalf of our communities. Amen. But the church has to get outside its four walls and go out where it makes a difference. And especially wherever the states were involved, like Texas, who were part of the Confederacy, we need to repent. There are county seats in the state of Texas that have monuments to Confederate soldiers and placards that say they believe in the cause. Somebody ought to go down there and repent and enact some repentance for blood guilt. Amen. Because they're, they're green. And I'll tell you, some of the counties where they have these Confederate soldiers and they do that, you take a look and they've got businesses that are boarded up and they're uh, economically in distress and not prospering and there's a curse on them. Amen. That's right. Where's the church? Where's the people of God who are going and challenging those covenants and saying, uh-uh, no, we're making a new blood covenant with the Lord Christ Yeshua. We're making a covenant with what He did on Mount Calvary and we're declaring that's void and non-effect and we are in covenant. Amen. And we speak life to our county. We speak life to our cities. We speak life to our state. Where's the church? Look, these things are serious. Even in Israel, this needs to happen. And if you happen to be listening in Israel, listen to me. There are covenant altars in the land of Israel that were made by Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And the Palestinians want every one of those covenant altars. They've designated them for their state. Why? Because if Israel will agree with that, they are in fact canceling the covenant that God made with them in the land. Amen. So Margie and I, several times, we have gone to, some of those are in Palestinian areas. Margie and I have gone to those covenant altars. And we have had communion. We invoked the blood. And we, and we declared, this land is in covenant with God and as believers, and, uh, believers in Christ and in His covenant. We are declaring that this land is redeemed for the original purpose that God established. And we're saying no land for peace. No to transferring this land. And every time we did that, it thundered or rained. Amen. Even in summer out of season. Oh my, we were doing that one year. And we we're going to go out on the Sea of Galilee. And we're talking, you know, this was in at a time where it wasn't supposed to be raining. When you get to May, it doesn't normally rain. And so we were going to go out on the Sea of Galilee, and I sensed the Lord say, take communion on the boat on the Sea of Galilee. I said, Lord, if I do that, it will rain. He said, take communion. We got out, we asked the boat captain, can we take communion? He said, yes. And so they were singing the song Oceans or something, and, and uh, we went out there, and we started taking communion. You know what happened? It rained all over us, but it was warm, and so the ladies just shouted, and they started dancing in the rain. Hallelujah. Listen, covenant is the most powerful weapon that God's given us Amen. when it's invoked with the blood, and it needs to be used in America, and we need to go out and challenge the covenants that the devil is making with death and make covenants of life and declare them in this land. Amen. Yes. That's what needs to happen. We're coming into a Shemitah year, which means the land is either going to fall and collapse, or it's going to be restored because of the covenant that we have of blood with Christ. Amen. What's it going to be? Between now and the 16th Yom Kippur, we're sealing our fate for this nation for the coming year. That ought to be sobering to the church, but unfortunately the church is not tracking with this because they think God has forgotten the covenants, and he's forgotten these feasts. He hasn't forgotten them at all. No way. No way. Well, we thought that God is no respecter of the feasts. Listen, they're not applied in the same way as they were in the Old Testament. They have a spiritual application, but they're still applied Amen. in Christ. Yes, it is. Would you, let, me, let me ask you this question. We know that Christ came as the Lamb of God, right? The Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. He fulfilled that type in the Old Testament, the Passover, because He's the Passover Lamb. Would we say now that He has fulfilled that, that we no longer need the blood of the Passover Lamb? Would we say that? Of course we would not say that. 
The Passover lamb still has an application, and so does its blood. We just see a more powerful spiritual application than the literal application in the Old Testament. Amen. Wow. Passover. Then on to Pentecost. You know, they believe that um, the law was given on Mount Sinai and on Pentecost. And according to the promised new covenant, and it's picked up in Hebrews chapter 8, right? But it's spoken of in Jeremiah um, chapter 31, verse 31. This is the new covenant I will make with the house of Israel. I will write my law in their heart, and I will be their God. And so the Jews believe this. Oh, he's coming back to do a new covenant. Well, when he came last time to give us a covenant on Mount Sinai, he came with fire and smoke. He, he, we heard his voice, and he gave us the law of the Ten Commandments. He's coming back. So they're, for all these hundreds and hundreds of years, they're waiting. Is this the year he's coming back with fire again? Well, he didn't come back to Mount Sinai. He came back to Mount Zion in the upper room. And tongues of fire came down on all 120. And they heard the voice of God speaking in tongues. And he wrote Amen. the law on their hearts just like he said he was going to do. Amen. That's an ongoing fulfillment. Is he still writing his law in our hearts? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Okay, so Pentecost is not completely fulfilled. And we understand in Joel chapter 2, there was an early rain and a latter rain. And he came at, Pente at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 with the early rain. But I want you to know there's a latter rain coming. It's greater than what we saw in Acts chapter 2. He's going to pour out his spirit in these last days. Come on now. Pentecost is not done. It's an ongoing fulfillment. Amen. You want to just throw out the feast? You're going to throw all this. At, you'll throw out the Lamb of God if you do that. If you throw out the feast, you're throwing out the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These fall feasts are not prophetically fulfilled. They're awaiting fulfillment. And they point to the great day when the last final trumpet, the Godol trumpet, will be sounded. Yes. And this mortality must put on immortality this flesh must put on incorruption and it says in 1 Thessalonians 4 16 that Christ shall descend with the shout of the archangel of the trumpet of God prophetically that points to the close of Yom Kippur when the final trumpet sounds right. so do we know we don't know the day and the hour but do we know the approximate time Christ is returning oh, yeah. yes we do it's going to be on or about Yom Kippur and the fall feast. Because all of this points to it. If you throw this out, you have no prophetic timeline or time clock to understand what God is saying and doing in the earth. And so as the church, as the believers, as the ecclesia, we need to re rediscover the prophetic timeline yes. that God's given in the feast. Because it tunes us in to what he's doing in the earth. And I'm telling you, this year in particular is very important because not only does it have the head of the year and the sounding of the trumpets warning of what's coming, it is a Shemitah year when the land is to rest from sin and iniquity, and it is also a 50th year since they enacted abortion and there's a sword getting ready to fall. It's either going to be the sword of blessing and restoration, or it's going to be the sort of judgment, and we're going to see a financial collapse and great judgment upon America. It. It's time to seek the face of God for this land. It's time to enact covenant, to go out to the places where there's been iniquity, to go out to the places where there's blood in the land, and to enact covenant with God. Amen. You mean that we can take communion and we can go places with it and use it as a blessing and a weapon? Yes! Amen. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says they overcame him with the word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. Amen. They applied the blood. They defeated the devil. Yes. They gave a testimony Amen. and the kingdom of God went forth in power. Amen. Why don't we wake up and get outside the walls of the church and take some covenant somewhere? Are you hearing me online? 
Let's see God work in our world. Let's see an application of the blood in our day. Now we're going to close by having communion because we're going to enact some covenant today. But I bless those of you online who have joined us. Take some communion. Fast and pray beginning Monday as we enter into the 10 days of the trumpets. Yom Tura, the day of the trumpets. Yes. And let's seek God for America before it's too late. In Yeshua's name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't go with it. I'm sorry. So 57.